Digambar Kamath was accused of the mining scam and being involved in it. But has BJP done anything to him? Absolutely nothing. I don't see you winning a single seat in Goa. It, it is the Bharatiya Congress Party. We can buy you, take this money, take that money. Your money will be put in there. Hello, good evening, namaste and welcome to Chitti Media. My name is Sharan Sati and I'll be your host for this show. Goa's elections are around the corner and you have leaders from Arvind Kejriwal, Mamta Banerjee, Tejasvi Surya, everybody campaigning already in the nooks and corners of Goa. And who better to discuss this than with uh, Mr. Xavier Rodriguez. Xavier Ji, Namaste. How are you? Namaste. I'm doing very good. How are you? I'm doing very good too. It's a pleasure to have you here again. And uh, first of all, uh, hearty congratulations on your show on NewsX. Uh, it's turning out to be quite a sensation. Well, thank you. We've tried to uh, stay true to what Goa Chronicle stands for which is based a lot on research and data and discussions more than uh, uh, noisy debates. So people have accepted it. And I'm, I'm humbled that people have accepted it. We don't have the mass that follows uh, the Goa Chronicle show, but you do have a lot of influential people who are very happy with the kind of content that we bring. Right. Well, very good luck going forward. And on that note, let me ask you my first question. Now, before we de uh, you know dive deep into uh, the elections of Goa, for the viewers who may not be as aware of how Goa's politics work, uh, could you give us a brief overview, especially about the demographics across different regions of Goa? So essentially, there are two parts, two districts in Goa. One is the North Goa district and the other one is the South Goa district. The North Goa district's got 20 constituencies, the South Goa's got 20 constituencies, which makes up a total constituency of about uh, 40 constituencies. Uh, currently, BJP is the ruling government. Uh, they've been ruling for the last 10 years. They got into power in 2012 with a majority. In 2017, they were not the single largest party. However, they formed the government through an alliance. Uh, that alliance with Goa Forward Party and uh, MGP had a, a fall through in uh, 2019 when BJP inducted uh, 10 Congress MLAs and uh, two MGP MLAs so that they get two thirds of the winning MLA uh, of, of the assembly at that point of time. Right. Uh, uh, Goa predominantly is a large uh, Hindu demographic with uh, almost 65% of the voters being Hindus, the 25, 26% being uh, Christians and the rest being Muslims and, and other religions. Goa is not uh, uh, seen as a, a very hardcore, uh, politics based on religion, because that really doesn't make much of an impact, uh, unless, of course, in certain pockets where the the Christian population is much more than the church has an influence on on the who the the, follower, the followers should vote to. Right. Uh, but by and large, uh, Goa is uh, highly democratic in its approach. The people are extremely very clear on what they want, like what they dislike. And uh, if you look at it from, from past, way back in 2012, they were very upset with the corrupt Congress government. And that's why they brought Congress from 22 seats to nine seats, you know, in 2012. Uh, right. In 2017, they uh, did the same with the BJP, even though you had Manor Parikar, who was the then Union Defense Minister, and they had about 22 seats, 23 with the Alliance at that point of time. They were dropped down to 13 seats in 2017 and that is why they have to stitch this alliance with Goa Forward Party and MGP post elections right yes. and Congress came up to 17 seats they were dropped to nine in 2012 they rose to 17 seats in 2017 so the people of Goa are very clear you know the worst uh, mistake that any political party can ever do is to assume they know the go and vote they don't right so in that sense, uh, there has been also a very rich history of horse trading in Goa and President's rule has been imposed. Uh, why is this quite special in the case of Goa compared to the other states is what a lot of people are asking. Because Goa is not about political parties, Sharon. Goa is about political satraps. 
you know, political leaders who are extremely powerful in their own right within their constituencies. So you take a gentleman like Athanasio Babush Monsara. Now, he's a person who's been, who was with an independent, he was with UGDP, then he came to Congress, then he came to Goa Forward Party, and now he's with BJP. Now, a gentleman like him, who I don't consider to be a gentleman because he's, he's accused of raping a minor, okay? He gets, uh, gets an induction into the BJP, even though BJP knows the fact that he is accused of this. Now, he's been charge sheeted by the same BJP, by the police under the BJP government itself, right? Mm-hmm. So sometimes the concept of principles that uh, people in BJP go and talk about saying party with a difference. And, uh, you know, I've raised this issue with the leadership at the center as well. I mean, what is party with a difference? When you, when a man accused by your own government, the police in your own government, you know, uh, goes about making such, uh, has done such a crime and is charged, cheated for the crime. Whether it's true or not is, is a matter of a court's uh, discretion and judgment. But the fact of the matter is that there is there is a charge sheet filed against him by by, by the police under your own government. Yeah. Yeah. So go as about satraps. People will still vote for Babush in, in some places. People will vote for a corrupt uh, in, in in like the the Gambar Kamat who was accused of the mining scam and being involved in it. But has BJP done anything to him? Absolutely nothing. Right. He still continues. You have Churchill Alama, you have Mickey Pacheco, you have so many of the others. There have been so many allegations left, right, and center. But there's never anything done to any of the corrupt in, in Goa. You right. know? And uh, and a lot of it has got to do with BJP because I don't think BJP has the spine to deal with corrupt people. Um, I think there is a similar story in Karnataka as well with certain legislators still being in power regardless of uh, being accused with corruption. So you're very right about this. But what is more uh, fascinating about this particular election that's upcoming is that you see a lot of national and regional leaders coming from Bengal and Delhi to campaign in Goa. Uh, I mean, why is this phenomenon happening this time? Well, AAP was always there. AAP was there the last time as well. Uh, AAP, of course, is looking at, at expanding its, its uh, water base across Delhi, uh, from Delhi to other states. Goa is an easy picking because the number of votes to win in Goa, a constituency in Goa is having like 20 to 25,000 voters. So winning winnability is about seven to 9,000 votes to maximum 10,000 votes in any case, right? Now, in if you spend about five years over a year or even a year working with the people and you've got, you're a person who's educated, got a right attitude, you know, you connect with the people, you could just create an upset. You could just create an upset. The point is, will AAP stand uh, the test of time as far as Goa is concerned? I don't see AAP winning a single seat in Goa. Personally. I'll, say so. I'll, I'll tell you why I say so. They will create, certainly increase their vote share from 2012. But they will not win a single seat. For, in, in, for them to win a single seat, they have to take a sizable amount of votes from the Congress. Right. The BJP votes normally tend to stay intact. It is the Congress votes and the floating votes that they'll have to pick up. If they're able to do that, then they win. Or they will come in maybe second, third, you know, but they will not be able to win that particular seat. I can't see any of their candidate, honestly, right. except probably one guy in the North. If, if he comes on board to the to up, he has a chance. Nobody in the South so far I, I see as winning. No. And how does the uh, Congress uh, stand uh, these elections? You know, that's a very, it's very strange, you know, uh, the the connect that some of the people in Goa and the voters have with the Congress. And that is something we witnessed in 2017 as well. You, you know, you would have thought that by 2012 that the Congress would have been wiped out because they were dropped down to nine seats at that point of time. But they came back okay. with 17 seats, right? So I think there is there is a there is a connect that people have with the Congress that if the Congress utilizes that connect effectively and put in new leaders, new faces, women leaders in front, they might just come back to about 15, 16 seats at this point of time. You see, one of the one of the greatest mistakes that BJP made in this in this uh, this term of theirs was that they inducted 10 Congress MLAs into the BJP. Now, by virtue of that, 
that MLA has to now contest the election in the same constituency, right? The Congress right. voters are already pissed off with him. Right. So they are angry with the leader. They are angry with the BJP. Naturally, that anger will get will have to move somewhere. So either it will move to the right. Congress or it will move to the AAP. In most likelihood, it will move to the Congress. Very interesting. And uh, why is there a phenomenon when uh, Christians are moving towards the BJP? Is this happening because of Manohar Parikar or is this a recent development? The Christians were moving towards the BJP. They aren't anymore. Okay. It, let, let's be clear on that. Manohar Parikar, I'll tell you. Manohar Parikar had the respect and the, the understanding to understand electoral politics beyond uh, the typical uh, uh, Hindu Christian formula of politics. Right. He was a very intelligent man and you understand knowledge uh, ruled over all levels of politics. He was able to uh, uh, unite with the Catholic Church and the leaders of the Catholic Church to by that principle itself, that I am an Indian and I'm and to me the Christian is also an Indian, and therefore we will work together to make Goa better. You right. see, when Manohar Parikar left uh, Goa and went to the to the Union uh, Ministry of Defense, he put in Lakshmikan Parsikar, who was a good man, but a very bad administrator. You know, he couldn't right. control what was happening around him. So what happened was. It created a, a sort of a, a, a break in the relationship with the intellectual segment of Goa and what I would consider to be even the Christian segment of Goa. I'm not saying that the Christians are all intellectuals. It's right. both the intellectuals and the Christian segment of Goa. This government, that is the Pramod Samant led government, other than the fact that they've got so many Christian MLAs with them, none of those MLAs have the hallmark that Manohar Parikar has to deal with the Catholic Church and to give them the confidence that the BJP is a political party that's devoid of the religious bigotry that it's known for. Right. That's the problem. None of those leaders and none of the church respects those leaders. Right. Interesting. I mean, uh, since we're talking about Manohar Parikar, how would you summarize his life and legacy and his contribution to Goa? I think Manohar Parikar... Uh, I don't, I don't actually think I know Manohar Parikar uh, is and was, uh, was the, the legend that, that, that Goa will always remember for the, for the coming years, simply because he had, he was educated, he was practical, and he was futuristic in his, in his, in his approach. So he had a, he had a very, uh, you know, uh, cohesive formula to move forward. And that's why people respected him even from the opposition. Right. Today, you have a chief minister who might be good to some quarters, but the larger section of, of the opposition don't have any respect for him. That's why they want him out. In fact, some of the leaders in the BJP itself, who are very ambitious, want to take Dr. Samant out. Now, of course, I don't expect Dr. Samant to be like a Manohar Parikar. But what is essential for BJP to understand is that you have to create next-gen leaders from grassroots, not by right. imports. BJP's biggest mistake, and I say it openly to the BJP, there is no BJP in Goa. It, it is the Bharatiya Congress Party. In Goa. Right. 17, almost 17 uh, MLAs, MLAs are right. former congressmen. But why is the reason? Like, are they not able to create more leaders on the ground? They, are just, the they want a shortcut mechanism to control Goa. That's it. Operation Lotus, right? Yeah, they, they just want a shortcut mechanism to control Goa. Now, look at the irony, you know, these are the same people. BJP was saying that we took MGP out of the alliance, Goa Forward Party out of the alliance. Then what is the need for BJP right now to make statements? Not one, three people of them have made statements saying we are open to alliance with like-minded parties. Who are they referring to? Right. Are they referring to like-minded parties like AAP? Congress, TMC, who's the like-minded party? Right. Are so they, they talking about the options Goa Forward them. Party? Are they talking about MGP? And that's the funny part. No, if they're talking about Goa Forward Party and MGP, then why did you get out of the alliance with them? Right. Why did you induct corrupt people and accuse rapists into the party? Right. 
so what's your prediction for the upcoming elections since uh, i think it's a mixed bag okay the advantage is certainly bjp mm -hmm. okay no doubt about it but they they are not in a majority right okay so the so it's bjp not in a majority with the probability of the congress having a considerable amount of votes or the votes being divided by congress and up thereby bjp having an advantage you mm -hmm. understand bjp on its own cannot win the selection this time the people of goa are not going to allow bjp to win the election so in fact uh, what the aam aadmi party is doing is more of a favor to the bjp by cutting down congress i think aam aadmi and tmc are both doing a very big favor to the bjp <laughs> right. uh, i think they've been brought in very very strategically uh, right. by people who might just dislike congress to get rid of congress and uh, what role do you think the regional parties are going to play uh, in this election beyond the tmc the and, regional uh, parties will play the king maker right okay go forward party right. mgp if between the two of them they manage to win five seats right uh, they are the king makers it be a very interesting election of course but uh, do tell me this what do goans want uh, from this election in the party they want a vision sharan they want a vision they want economy to move they want mining to restart they want tourism to be ecocentric they want okay. tourism and infrastructure development to take into understanding the demographic the, the ecological demographics of goa they don't want delhi to tell us what to do okay. the problem is all these political parties that come in these delhi based political parties and now a political party from west bengal wants to tell us what to do do you think we goans are fools we don't know how to run goa the uniqueness of manohar parikar was that no matter who the delhi leader was manohar parikar always did what was in the interest of goa not what was in the interest of the delhi based lobby mm -hmm. unfortunately the leaders in goa right now in all national political parties do what is necessary for the lobby in delhi rather than for the interest of goa right. so it's important for the goans to get rid of the delhi lobby right very interesting i i think this is also a perception uh, that's forming in the south even in karnataka for that matter uh, the disconnect that we have with delhi is something that probably national parties do not take cognizance of every leader sharan comes here wants to turn goa into a shanghai into a uh, singapore into a macau right i mean please for christ sake this is goa goa has got its unique or about itself it does not need to turn into a shanghai right it does not need to turn into a macau goa if you go into the history was the economic center of the entire portuguese rule and not that that's a great thing right. from an india context but the fact of the matter is we were never devoid of talent we were never devoid of economic opportunities no person in delhi is going to tell us how to run goa right so very interesting which is why i even personally whenever i visit goa i try to avoid the north because of all the casinos and stuff like that south goa is much more of my preference to travel and hopefully i can be there just to observe what is happening on the ground uh, but what the bjp is also campaigning on is on one ground that uh, the uniform civil code that has been implemented in goa can be perhaps replicated on a national scale do you think that can be done of course it should be done it can it should be done goa is a living example of the implementation of the uniform civil code some of the good things that we got from the portuguese uh, rule and we decided to implement and stake it forward uh the point is this goa you know why is goa important for the national scenario and that's probably got to do with a lot of the positive vibes that uh, the state of goa has got from from a spiritual sense uh if you look at uh, uh you know um, prime minister modi is assigned to the prime minister that decision happened in goa the decision for atal bihari vajpay also to become the prime minister happened in goa right. you know when they had the state executives out there so people realized the value of of a positive uh, state like goa in these decisions and normally the government that's at the state 
is normally the government at the center. Normally, right? Okay. So the point is, Goa becomes very important. Why is Mamta Banerjee so much in Goa? It's too small a state for her. She could have actually used all her money and go to another state to conquer that. But because she believes she can connect with what she terms as a secular water base in Goa, as a rational water base in Goa, she's assuming by bringing faces like Luis Infalero from the Congress, Leander Pace from, uh, from the sporting uh, fraternity, and Nafisa Ali from the Bollywood fraternity, maybe right. she would be able to connect with uh, the educated, the intellectual masses in Goa that want change from the typical political setup that exists in Goa, right? right. The point is this, Goa has got a very positive uh, uh, force that allows for people to grow uh, and, and, and grow extensively at a national, national space. Right. The problem is, is the, the uh, uh, ass assessment that a lot of people in Delhi or, or say even in West Bengal or in other parts of the country make about the people of Goa. Right. Don't underestimate the people of Goa and think that they are a people who are susegad in nature. Because right. if you assume us to be people who are susegad in nature, you come in, you throw your money, you give us your freebies, and that we will fall like, like puppy dogs at your feet to the crumbs, you'll be sadly mistaken. You don't know the people of Goa. Right. You don't know the revolt nature that we have. Right. And I come from those constituencies that led those revolts during the fight against the Portuguese. So I know what I'm talking about. Right. Extremely interesting. Uh, Saviyoji, I uh, will uh, conclude with one question that a lot of people are asking. Will Savio Rodriguez be contesting the Goa elections this time? Uh, well, honestly, I would like to contest. Uh, but I think... Uh, uh, the most important aspect is I think it's necessary for an individual like me who understands the over, overall dynamics of Goan politics to inspire people to uh, vote in the right direction and for the right person for this constituency, rather than me taking a, an active role and uh, contesting right now. If at any point of time the political party that I look to work with decides to say I should get into it, then they should give me ample amount of time to work because politics is not something that's going to happen overnight. While there is, a, there is an image that people have about me, there is a respect. There are also people who don't like me, which is normal because of the kind of work that I do. The point is, would I, if given an opportunity, would I contest? The answer is yes. Is right. that time right now? I don't know that. That's up to Ma Saraswati if she decides. The right. most important thing that's required for Goa, Sharan, and I must say this, is Goa needs to move forward. Goa is a, is a state in India that's globally recognized for all its promises that it has. Unfortunately, the promise that got most propagated is the promise of drugs, party capital, and sex. Right? right? That's right. not Goa. Goa is also a place for good education, good uh, stay, uh, startup initiatives, good uh, lifestyle if you want to lead a good healthy life. And it also has an opportunity to grow into a really economic diverse state without necessarily tampering with manufacturing industries and all that. You know, small states can also be highly successful just by, by focusing on the right sectors. Unfortunately for us, un when Manohar Parikar has left, we've got people who are more in interested in just creating huge infrastructures out here without realizing the impetus of the infrastructures over here. Let's take the Mopa right. International Airport right now, which is yeah. everybody is saying is a necessity. Goa has got 14 lakh population. You're looking at a target tourist of 30 million tourists as per their own reports. Can you please tell me how do you sustain 30 million tourists in a 14 yeah. lakh population? Yeah, yeah. Unless you're going to expand and make uh, Goa into a Mumbai and destroy what Goa stands for. Right. So there are many things that are going absolutely wrong. Their whole focus is to turn the northern side of Goa into a Nevada, into a Las Vegas. 
and the people of Goa are not stupid. Right. We know it, we can see it. And we know the Delhi lobby is behind it. Right. And there's going to be resistance to it. And BJP's failure will be this, that they only listen to the Delhi lobby and that's Congress's problem as well. So it's nothing new. Right. Well, uh, regardless of uh, how you decide to contest on which party you decide to contest with, we are with you, Samyoji, because we know that you're a very good human being and that uh, you're somebody who's very patriotic. So, uh, and I hope we can break the news first <laughs> and have sure. the knowledge of that once you decide to. Well, a lot of people, honestly, Sharon, a lot of people uh, locally would not want me to contest the elections. Let me, let me tell you that when I mean competitors and people within the political party I'm going to contest from as well. Right. Simply because I have a very good equation with the guys at the center and they right. think um, that uh, I might create trouble for people at a local level because uh, I, I just talk plainly. You know, there's no other way. I'm not a politician. I, I'm just a humanist who right. believes that, that, you know, sometimes there's something good with with you, you know, there's, there's this good state, Goa is a great state, you know, a lot of people come here. It's a great life. I've given a great life to my kids being in Goa, you know, I was living in Bombay prior to that in Dubai and then Bombay and I brought them here and they have had a great life and I'm so indebted to Goa for what it's done, you know, I've seen my kids evolve into such fine uh, humans because of being in Goa. Right. I think we can do the same for many people, you know, we can economically, socially, take Goa forward in a very positive manner. But today, all you're seeing about Goa is, okay, let's let's put another casino. Let's make it a Las Vegas. Let's let's make it uh, the sex capital of, the, of Asia. You know, whether they say it or not, that's what they want to do. Why shouldn't it be that? That was never Goa. Just because the hippies came and promoted Goa does not mean that we have to do the same. Right. And Goa is not, the women in Goa are not, not uh, women out there just to sleep with you. You know, it's, it's strange. I'll tell you, I was at the airport some months back and I'll tell you why I get pissed off with the guys from Delhi. I was at the airport a couple of uh, months back, uh, you know, prior to the, the COVID uh, situation and I, there were guys coming into Goa and they saw me. I was an alone guy. And they were like, you know, oh, you're from Goa and what, you know, can you help us? And what do you, so I said, what do you want help on? Says, you know, we want to check out uh, where do we get the women over there, which are the places where we can go and pick up the women. So I gave them the number of the police station. And, uh, <laughs> I said, you call this gentleman. He's the best. He has all the right women with him. That's the image. But on a serious note, this is very distressing because, uh, I mean, that, that's what I come across as well from most of my friends uh, trying to visit Goa. Uh, or people in general for that matter. And I genuinely hope that they can see Goa for the beauty of it, the, the culture that Goa it is has. not, see Goa is, you know, uh, it actually is the word, I'm sorry, I'm being a little more of your time. Goa no, is no. the word Susega, okay, which is the most prostituted word from Goa, right. is also the most misinterpreted word. Susega does not mean lackadaisical or lazy. Right. It means content. The people of Goa are very content people because our lifestyles were very content. We would be in the fields, we would plow the fields, we would come home, we would have our lunch, we would take a siesta, then we'd go back to the fields. That's contentment. If we are earning 2 lakhs a month, we are happy. We don't want to earn 15 lakhs a month and, and be stressed about it. That's contentment. That's susegal. That's not lackadaisical. Right. That's not lazy. Unfortunately, when these guys come from Delhi, they assume, oh, I'm going to throw my money here and there. I've met so many of these Delhi guys. Oh, um, aapko sakte hai. Ye paisa le lo, wo paisa le lo. Aapka paisa aapke udar dalmo. Okay? This is Goa. And in Goa, we are rulers. We are kings, the Goans. Absolutely. Uh, one can only understand how you must be feeling. And I'm sure this is the general sentiment across uh, Goans too. And this will be a very interesting election, uh, given the passion that people of Goa uh, will be voting with. Uh, to uh, You know, till the last election. minute, you will not know who will win. I can tell you that much. It will be very interesting and I hope you can join us again uh, to discuss what happens during the elections. And uh, in case you do decide to contest, please do uh, give us an exclusive.
I will. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Savio Ji. Have okay. a good day. And to all our viewers, please do like, share, and subscribe to Chitta Media. My name is Sharan Sethi. Signing off. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content, and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Thank you. Namaskar.